So I'm here with Chris Williams, Technical Director at M Sport, and he is going to talk us through the key changes for the 2022 WRC regulations, which have seen new chassis, new hybrid systems, and a complete revamp of the cars. So Chris, can you just give us a quick overview of the key differences between the last gen WRC and what we have now with the hybrid cars? Uh, okay, so um, the biggest difference to start with is the chassis. So we have a space frame chassis uh, with a composite body on top of that, whereas before we were using the production body shell and uh, yeah, developing that. So that's a, the biggest thing on that. The other thing is to have a hybrid unit in the car. It's the, yeah, the second biggest thing really. Okay, and so with those changes, obviously they've been done both to make them more attractive to manufacturers, but also to keep costs slightly more under control. Do you think they've been successful on both those fronts? Um, not totally. So the chassis side is, comes in a combination of reasons for doing it. One is so we have fair competition amongst the manufacturers, because the manufacturers all want to use a slightly different car from people want to use small cars up to us who want to use small SUVs. Allow us to achieve a car that is comparable on performance uh, on the chassis side, um, so that's one thing really. Uh, the safety is another big aspect of the new cars, uh, should be a lot safer, much more uh, safety cage and structure around the crew. Uh, and then the hybrid, yeah, the hybrids just bring us more in, in line with technology today and to give us something else. Awesome. And in terms of, obviously you're now working with a tube frame chassis, how tightly constrained are you on the construction of that chassis? Are you, is it effectively a spec central chassis or do you have some freedom of design? Um, we have spec elements, uh, so we must carry certain elements and within those elements they must be uh, within certain volumes, let's say, uh, and have certain measurements, so we all have to work to a quite a tight um, quite a tight measurements in certain areas, uh, distances, but in that we do have freedom. So you will see amongst the cars that are all very slightly different. So we've all taken the regulations and adapted the architecture, let's say, to how we want to best uh, present our car for overall, really, for overall performance for us. And so, you know, because I know in the past when you were still working with a spec body shell, yeah. you know, sometimes you'd run into issues with engine transmission positioning, that yes. Sort of things. Has that all gone now? Um, so we're more constrained now, so we're all constrained to engine positions that's a similar. Rather than based from uh, your road car, so we'd have to carry over engine positions with some freedom on top of that for your road car, now we all have the same. Um, yeah, wheelbase again it is a similar thing. Uh, before it came from your road car, now wheelbase is spec. So it kind of brings us all much more together. I'm assuming the same applies with suspension. You know, previously you had to be within a certain area compared to stock. Exactly. Now you're more specified. Exactly. So now we all have the same uh, targets, same measurements, the same bits we have to hit. Um, so it isn't dependent on your road car. So we all, you know, theoretically, we should be all uh, able to achieve the same suspension if we wish to. I'm looking at obviously the hybrid system, which is the, yeah. the next big addition. How's the development process of that panned out and how have you had much input since the initial rules were laid down in terms of the development with compact dynamics and that side of things? Um, so we were in, this, we're in it at the start. So we worked with the FIA to create the tender. So that set up effectively what the hybrid units will be, what we wanted to be capable of and all this kind of stuff. Um, what we thought we could um, include in the car in terms of mass and also the targets for power as well. So we were in at the start uh, and then once the tender came in, a lot of the things are quite uh, set in the tender. So Compact Dynamics said, right, we can do what you want, but uh, the layout will be like this. As long as they meet the tender, that's for them to decide. Um, then when the first units come, we're starting to work with them. There's not a lot of evolution once we have the units, to be fair. Um, they came quite late and we had, let's say, a short period to try and get used to them, sort out the software, how to drive them, how to you know, work with them, let's say, how to connect to them, and you know, the good and the bad points, let's say. And in terms of testing with the units, obviously you had them running in the cars. Have you had any opportunity to dyno test and run them on your yes. own test rigs? Yes, oh yes. Okay. I think you know, the very first thing we did was take the unit and put it on a dyno. Um, we need to be sure we can control it, uh, make sure that we can calibrate it and that we have a good setup before we go anywhere near a car. 
Uh, and then after that, you know, we're doing lots of work on the dyno to make sure that we can control it with the strategies we want to do, that we're getting the best performance and just reliability and durability tests and this kind of thing. And in terms of those strategies, I know there was a lot of talk as these rules were being developed about how much freedom you guys as engineers would have yeah. because deployment strategy is so integral to the drivability of the car. Yeah. How has that panned out now? Um, Honestly, I think we have maybe more freedom than I thought we were going to have, um, which is interesting for us as engineers. Um, so I think there are, I think people will converge to a similar strategy in the end. Um, trying to make it predictable uh, is probably the hardest thing. So it's uh, predictable, consistency um, is quite difficult in the way that the regulations are written. So I think people will learn quite a bit as we start to compete. Different, uh, different surfaces, different environments may require something slightly different. But all of that had to be done in our development. So we're now kind of fixed, homologated maps, calibrations. We can't really adjust. Right. And so with those three, is that effectively like a tarmac gravel? I don't want to comment. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> we have three strategies and we'll use them however yeah. is best. How is the cooling on the hybrid system? Um, that's quite an interesting topic. Mm. And I think from what I see from the teams, we all have a slightly different view. Okay. I think we've approached it in slightly different ways. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, how it goes, to be honest. Yeah. And then moving to the aerodynamic side of things. Yeah. Where kind of with cost controls in mind, it's been slimmed down about a bit in terms of you know, yes. how many toys you have to play with. Yeah, um, for sure it's a, an impact. You know, we do not have some of the more um, high level, let's say, um, aerodynamic features. You know, things like dive planes have gone. Uh, some of the um, uh, cassettes and what have you, the wheel arch exit stuff that we're using, yeah, diffusers. Yeah, for sure it's hit us. Um, have we got a good aero package? I think so. There are still items that we are able to do that we managed to negotiate with the FIA that we all pretty much have the same. Um, so they're not what we had last year, but it's not back where we were in 2015. Yeah. Um, but also we've been constrained on surface shape. You know, in, we had some uh, quite dramatic surface shapes at one point, which were deemed not really to uh, adhere to the regulations, so some of those have had to be removed. Right. So it's been quite strict in certain areas. The FIA have been uh, fairly forceful, let's say, with the aero on pushing us down a direction that they want. Uh, and anything that was even marginally in the grey area has all been removed. So okay. you'll see the cars look in certain areas very similar. Chris, I will stop asking questions. No worries. Thank you very much for your time.